Lord, help us to see you. In the places where we have failed to see. Lord, help us to hear you. In the voices of the hunger and those in pain. Lord, help us to know you. That we may encounter you in the of the lonely and the Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Lake. Benton United Methodist Church, good morning to all of our friends joining us online through Facebook and YouTube. I am Pastor Vincent Slocum. I am so glad to be here this morning with all of you. It's been a big week. It's been a cold week, but, but we're nice and warm here. I turned the temperature even a degree or two higher than normal this week because I figured we would... We would all need it, as frigid and, and as cold as, as the past week has been. This week, we had folks come out and, and tie blankets for shelter dogs. We had our, our Methodism 101 class, and we had a nice big turnout for that. It's, it's, been, it's been a great week, and this morning, we've got an excellent worship service. We are continuing our sermon series, Glimpses of the Kingdom, sermon series all about the new kind of kingdom and the new kind of family that, that Jesus was creating through his ministry and that we as Christians in Jesus' church are, are called to be members and makers of. We're continuing that sermon series this morning. Before we begin, I, I invite you to pause Feel the warmth of the sanctuary around you. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Breathe in the living presence of God, which we share amongst ourselves in, in this space. Breathe out aches and pains and shivers. Breathe in the warmth the healing comfort of God's Holy Spirit and breathe out the worries and the cares of the world outside of this place. 
for the next hour, my friends, as we share together in this time of worship, I invite you to continue to be present with God and present with each other. Continue to breathe deeply of that presence here in this space as deeply and as often as you need to. And so as we begin our worship, let us greet one another once again with a sign of God's peace. Please turn and, and make friendly eye contact with, with someone seated near by you. Let's, let's act as though we're excited to see each other this morning. And as you all repeat after me, I am glad. You are here. You are here. God loves you. God loves you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And there's nothing you can do about it. My friends, please stand. Greet one another with a sign of God's peace this morning. <laughs> My microphone's on right now, so whatever you say, Good morning to all of our friends joining us online, Facebook and YouTube. God, please be with you this morning. We're so glad to have you joining. You want to do it during the tithes and offerings? Um, just like normally I talk about, you can come up and talk about what a blessing that was for our church and town.
friends, this morning I invite you all to join with me once again as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which can be found in your pew bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, in just a moment, I'd, I'd like to ask Pat Max and Diane Edmonds to come up and, and help us collect our tithes and offerings. But, but before... We do. I, I, I want to invite Linda Zeeb, actually, to, to come up, who wants to share an update with us. As many of you know, just a couple of weeks ago, we had our church rummage sale, and, and as it turns out, it was an absolutely smashing success. And, and Linda would like to tell you just a little bit more about that. Let me give her some slack on my microphone cord here. We don't have to snuggle. Uh, I can hear me without it. Yep, go ahead. This is on behalf of the entire UMW. We all thank you so very much for everything that you donated, everybody that helped, everybody that cleaned up. We did end up bringing in, our deposit was $3,138, which is pretty amazing. We did, however, have one donation that was $800 alone, so we really like to thank that person as well. And so that means that we actually sold out of everything that you brought in and put out there and all your hard work, we did $2,338. So that's the best we've ever done. Yay. Excellent. And, and Linda, you know, real quick, now, that, that money goes to support the United Methodist Women. Yes. You, you said UM, UMW. Uh, but, but the UMW uses that to support a, a variety of different, um, missions. different missions. missions. It, what, what are some of those missions? So, so folks know what, what all this, uh, this uh, blessing is, is going to support here. There's many community missions here, local missions that we support. Um, we support UMCOR through the United mm -hmm. Methodist Church for, you know, catastrophes, things mm -hmm. like that. We support, name a couple others, Pat, because so I'm well. having a... Kentucky. Yeah, we have a, a mission in Kentucky that we support. It's a home. Um, we've Project. supported Lake Fenton Community Creation. Schools. Yeah. Um, Project, Project Graduation. Yep. yep, Project Graduation. So Travis many, right. many different missions. And if people come to us, you know, that are in need, then of course we have funds down for them. Which we do yes. on, on occasion. We yes. have we have brought Thanksgiving and, and Christmas dinners for, for right. folks in need and, and all kinds of, of great things. So we support teenage and, and homeless uh, runaway youth centers and, and shelters and disaster relief all over the country and, and actually all over the globe through through UMCOR. So Anytime you hear about uh, an ecological disaster, a hurricane, an earthquake, a tornado, uh, there's a good chance that there's a Methodist church nearby and that UMCOR is on the scene and, and helping to provide disaster relief. And, and so thanks to all of your hard work and thanks to the generous donations and the items that were brought in, we are making $3,000, over $3,000 worth of impact to help make sure that those missions and causes continue to have the resources that they need to do the incredible work that they do. So thank you, Lake Fenton, for yes, all of her. the ways. Thank you so much. Thank you for all of the ways that you step up to support ministry right here at Lake Fenton, but also the ways that you always step up to support ministry all over our community and, and all over the world.
Almighty and everlasting God, it brings us great joy to place these gifts at your altar. May they be for us a source of your abundance as we seek to be a source of that abundance to lonely and hurting individuals all over our community and, and all over this world. Amen. And now once again, as we prepare to come together in a time of congregational prayer, I'd like to ask if there are any joys or concerns that anyone would like to share with us this morning, anything for which we as a congregation and, and as a community can, can be in prayer today. I have a joy. I get to go see my little granddaughter who turns a year next week. So it's, I'm very blessed that I'm able to go and see her. Yay for time with grandkids. All right. Prayers of joy and, and thanksgiving for, for that. <coughs> Karen, I, I understand we have some cause for, for thanksgiving. Is, is that... Correct. Well, Someone who's sleeping in today, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Um, Kamea had her 21st birthday yesterday. Ooh. So, so prayers of joy and, and congratulations for Kamea who celebrated her 21st birthday and for Kamea being the, the upstanding and, and fine individual that she is. When I celebrated my 21st birthday, it was a thoroughly disreputable affair. <laughs> Prayers for Brian Forrester, a friend of Carol's son who is battling brain cancer at this time. Any other joys or concerns that, that anyone would, would like to share with us? Karen and Gary Morrison. Continued prayers for Gary, Gary and Karen Morrison. It's, Gary suffered a fall and is in, in rehab right now, and, and, and Karen, who we all know works herself to the bone to support the church, is now working herself to the bone to be there for, for her husband. And so prayers, prayers for the two of them in this very, very difficult time, and, and I'm sure that Karen and, and Gary appreciate any well wishes or cards and, and caring words that, that anyone would like to send in, in their direction. Yes, I have a friend named yeah. Mike who um, had a defibrillator put in probably a couple of weeks ago, and he was out in his pawing, you know, shoveling his driveway, mm -hmm. and he actually died, and it brought him back. Wow. Thank wow. you, God. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, God. Prayers of thanks for the glories of modern medical science and, and that God has gifted us as human beings to be investigators and studiers who, who unravel all of these secrets that, that make life just a little bit easier for, for those in need. Well, at this time, I'd, I'd also like to, to invite uh, Barb, Barb Harris and, and Linda Zeeb to, to come up. You may have noticed that, that we've got some blankets here. Uh, this is not just because it's been cold. Uh, we, we were not just trying to prepare in, in case of a cold Sunday morning. In, in fact, we had uh, Barb, Linda, would, would the two of you mind, mind coming up here? Um, so, so we had, how many people were, were there? 20. Yes, about 20 people up a here. Baby and a dog. And a baby and, and a dog and a partridge in a pear tree were, <laughs> were all up here at, at the church, uh, tying together blankets. These 90 blankets. So all of these blankets, these are soft, these are warm, and every single one of them is going to support an, an abandoned or, or neglected shelter animal in, in need as, as they struggle to, to fight the cold, it's to, to make sure that they, they are cared for and that they, they have warmth. 20 people were up here making all of these and, and this morning, as, as we share together in our time of prayer, I'd like to ask that you all 
join me as we as we say a word of blessing over this. Pat, will you come down too as well? So in, in addition to that, many many of you here know Brian Nichols. Brian has been has been struggling with, with cancer over the past few months, and it's been a long and very difficult battle. Pat Pat has prepared this this beautiful shawl for us, or, or quilt, or what do we, what do we call it? Shawl, okay, it is, it is a shawl, okay, I wanted to make sure that, that my grammar was correct here. So Pat has, has prepared this beautiful shawl, and so I'd like to ask that you all join us as well in, in praying a word of blessing over the blankets and, and the shawls as we share together in, in our time of blessing. So you folks that are up here, you go ahead and just Put a hand right, right down there. Everyone else, just go ahead and put a hand forward. That's, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to send good vibes and, and all of our prayerful energy we can up, up in this direction. My friends, whatever joys or concerns you have in your hearts this morning, I, I invite you all to join with me now. Offer them to God in your hearts as we take this time together in prayer this morning. Almighty and everlasting God, Lord, we give you thanks for the many hands who have come together to, to make the blessing of, of these blankets and, and this shawl possible. We pray that you be with those hands, strengthen and, and equip them to continue to do your good work for those in need. Even as we ask that you be with the animals who are to receive these, these blankets and, and that you be with Brian and, and his family as they receive this shawl, as they seek warmth and safety in this blanket, may they also feel your safety, your warmth, your love, and your comfort poured out on them like the waters of baptism. May it flood their hearts and may they be strengthened by it. Lord, in a world full of hurting and suffering and, and sickness, we give you thanks that you have blessed us to be able to make a difference in the lives of those who are hurting, even if that difference, even if that gesture of caring is, is a small one. We ask that you always help us to know the time when, when we might step forward and be a caring, loving hand to someone in need in, in our lives. Let us be a blessing to them, even as you are a blessing to us. Lord, for all these things, the joys and concerns which we have named here, and those which we have, we have kept in our hearts this morning, but which you have seen which and one? you have named, we pray to you this morning in the words that your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. And Bart, you can stay up now. You're, you're doing our scripture reading. So, so now Bart will, will come up and share our scripture reading this morning from the Gospel of Matthew. For those of you who are following along at home or, or in your pews, it's Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Again, that's Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. It's very interesting, I think. <laughs> when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates a sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. 
I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you who are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them. Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So it sounds to me like there really is a hell. Because <laughs> he sent them into the, what did I say, eternal fire. It sounds, it sounds that way, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have a couple of thoughts too. We'll, we'll talk. About that. <laughs> as, as fate would have it, right? I just happened to prepare a few, a few remarks this morning. Usually, never do this sort of thing. The 2014, I got a job, and this job was a big deal. To me, I had just graduated from college. I'd been working as an intern for the city of Flint, and then in 2014, they offered me a job working as a full-time city planner in the Office of Planning and Development. I was stoked about this job. I was going to do important work in this job, work that mattered. I was going to do work that made a difference. This was a dream come true for me. It really was. So this morning, I want to tell you about one of the first projects that I undertook in that job and the unexpected lesson that I learned from it. You see, in the North Flint area, there's a park, Bassett Park, a big 36-acre wooded park. Well, over the past couple of years, the wooded area of that park had become overgrown. Tree limbs and, and branches had fallen, bushes and shrubs had sprung up, and the mowers for, that managed the, the city mowing contract couldn't get their mowers into the woods and, and mow with all that brush and debris all over the place. And so a full third of this park had just started to grow up wild. Well, I decided I wanted to do something about this. I was important now. After all, I could get things done, and that's what I was going to do. Get things done. So I connected with a church youth group that had traveled to Flint from out of state in Delaware and was looking for some service projects as part of a mission trip. And they said, great! Yeah, we'd love to help. So I got a chainsaw and weed whackers. We had loppers and hedge trimmers. I got us a dumpster, and we worked. And by the end of the day, we'd cleaned that whole wooded area up. And, and I thanked the kids for all of their 
hard work and service, and I had everything chipped up and hauled away and, and arranged for the city's mowing contractors to come in and clean the area up with their mowers. It felt good. I made a difference that day, I told myself. I did quite a bit of patting myself on the back that day. Well, later that week, I decided to go out to the local neighborhood association meeting. I figured it would be a good opportunity to introduce myself. Let them know all the great work that I and this church group had done for them. Soak up all the praise that they were sure to heap upon me. So as the neighborhood association meeting opened, everyone went around the table and introduced themselves where they were from, why they were there, that, that sort of thing. And, and then it came to me, and, and when the time came, I stood up and I smiled, and, and I told them that I was from the city of Flint, and that I would be helping out with things like parks and neighborhoods, and I told them how I wanted to do things differently. Right? That maybe the city of Flint wasn't perfect, but with me, me things were going to be better. I'm, I'm here to help clean up parks and neighborhoods like yours, I, I told them. And, and I told them all about the cleanup, and I told them all about how hard these kids from Delaware had, had worked, and, and what a great job they did. And, and it was about this time that one of the women, sitting around the table, produced a water bottle from out of her purse filled with some of the most disgusting, brown, mucky drinking water that you have ever seen in your entire life and placed it on the table in front of me. Now, at this point, Imagine that you can probably guess how the rest of this meeting went for me as a very important representative of the city of Flint in what would prove to be the very early stages of a rapidly escalating water crisis. <clears throat> what followed was 45 minutes of fury, fear, frustration, and pain as the residents of that neighborhood demanded to know who I thought I was coming into their neighborhood, railing about the quality of their parks, talking to them like I was some kind of messiah sent to save them from their own brokenness, expecting them to swoon over me for basically just doing my job and expecting them to swoon over a bunch of kids from out of state when their own children and families were living in fear for their own health being forced to drink contaminated and potentially poisonous drinking water. If things were going to be so much better, with me, they asked, then why was their hair falling out in the bathroom sink? And why were their grandkids waking up with rashes all over their bodies? For 45 minutes, I deflected. I pleaded with them. I told them, it wasn't me. You've got the wrong guy. It was the emergency manager's office. I was just an intern at the time. That was above my pay grade. I had nothing to do with the city's drinking water. And that was all absolutely true. But it also didn't matter. And in the end, it wasn't the point. For 45 minutes, we went on like this until finally the Neighborhood Association's president stood up, let me know that I had answered 
all of their questions and that if I did not have any further business with the association, then I was free to leave. Every time I read this morning's scripture reading, I think back on that meeting. Truthfully, if I understand anything about this morning's scripture reading, it's because of that meeting. So this morning's reading comes to us from the end of Matthew's gospel, right before the crucifixion. In fact, immediately after this morning's reading, Jesus tells his disciples point blank that he's going to be crucified in two days. And we find out that one of his own disciples, Judas, is conspiring to betray him. Now last week, we talked about how Jesus became famous as a teacher. In Matthew's gospel especially, Jesus is presented as the ultimate teacher, the best, the greatest, the most <clears throat> inspiring and effective teacher Jerusalem had ever seen. In fact, the Gospel of Matthew is often referred to as the teaching gospel because of just how effectively it distills and conveys some of Jesus' most famous teachings. Now, towards the end of Jesus' ministry, the message and the style of his teachings and, and stories begins to shift a little bit, and we see that in this morning's reading. Where before, Jesus was trying to teach his disciples and, and the people he met how to live with humility and with compassion and love. But towards the end of his ministry, Jesus began to teach them how to do all of these things without him. How would they live? with humility, with compassion, with love, once he wasn't there to keep them on track, knowing that he's about to face his end, he is making sure that they are ready for what comes next. What would they do when the teacher wasn't there to answer all of their questions? And so he tells them this story about the Son of Man, which is really just a name that Jesus borrows from the book of Daniel to talk about himself. So he tells them this story about the Son of Man separating out sheep and goats like a good shepherd. As Jesus' disciples listen to this story, Jesus explains to them. Jesus says, to the sheep, the Son of Man will say, when I was naked, you clothed. When I was thirsty, you gave me water. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was sick and wounded, you cared for me. When I was a prisoner, you visited me. And, and then he'll put the goats on the other side because they didn't do any of these things. And the sheep and the goats will both ask the Son of Man, well, well when did we ever see you? When did we do all of these things? Or when did we refuse to do any of these things. And that's when Jesus gets right down to the point. He says, whenever you gave any of these things to the least among you, whenever you refused them to the least among you, you gave them or you refused them to me. You see, in the end, in one of the last sermons that Jesus shared, with his disciples, he wanted to make sure that he was absolutely clear. It's not enough to look inside yourselves for Jesus. It's not even enough to look amongst each other. Jesus here is saying to his disciples and saying to us, when you go looking for me, when you want to find me, go out looking among the poor. Look at me in the faces of those who are hungry and homeless. When you need me, you will find me with the rejected, the cast out, and the broken people of the world. That's the challenge of this scripture. And make no mistake, it is a challenge. 
That's harder than you think. At least it has been for me. Continues to be for me. You see, as Christians, we're called to be good. We're called to be just and loving. We're called to be examples of Christ-like love and compassion in the world. This is a good thing. For the most part, we do this really well. Not always, but for the most part, we, we do. <clears throat> I know that many of you do this throughout our community, day in and day out. We serve at homeless and runaway youth shelters. We volunteer at food and coat drives. We donate to local charities. We tie blankets for shelter animals that have been abandoned or neglected. We mentor teenagers at our local schools. We embody Christian love in practice at local theater programs. We open our doors to serve alcoholics and addicts in need. Lake Fenton United Methodist works. Lake Fenton United Methodist serves. And Lake Fenton United Methodist loves. And I love you all for it. But here's the trap that we can fall into if we aren't careful. It's the trap that I fell into all those years ago at my neighborhood association. You see, I may have had the best of intentions. I may have stepped up to clean that park. I may have organized the volunteers. I may have gone above and beyond in making all of that happen. But at that meeting, I was reminded I didn't do any of those things to serve those people. I did those things because I thought I was there to save those people. You see, I walked into that room absolutely convinced that that's what I was going to do. Absolutely convinced. I didn't know them. I didn't know their lives or their concerns. I didn't know their fears or their problems, and yet I had the arrogance to think that I knew how to fix them. That all those folks needed was someone like me, a good and hardworking and compassionate person to get them where I do they needed to be. I didn't go there to find Jesus. I went there to be Jesus. You see, what we as Christians must always remind ourselves when we go out and we follow Jesus' call to love and to serve others is that when Jesus is sending us out into the world, we're not going out to be Jesus. We are going out there to find him. We're going to go out there to see him, to feel him to experience him directly in the flesh when we walk out those doors to serve those in need. We're not doing it because they need us. We should be doing it because we need them. In this morning's reading, Jesus makes it clear to his disciples just as he makes it clear to us. If we as followers of him truly want to know him, to see him and feel him and experience him in all his fullness, we're going to have to do it outside of these walls, and we're going to have to do it out among people we may not normally encounter or want to encounter. To know them, to understand them, to hear them, to see them, to listen to them, as though we were seeing or hearing or listening to Jesus. Please pray with me this morning. Lord, this morning we ask that you grant us humility. Help us to see and to hear and to feel you in all those places where we have wanted to be you. Help us to see you in the face of those who have been rejected. Help us to hear you 
in the voices of those who are overlooked. <coughs> Help us to experience you in the company of those who are lost and who are hurting. That in seeing them, in hearing them, and in knowing them better, we might come to see and to hear and to know you even better. Amen. Proclaim 
release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death, made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, and broke it. Gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on those of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and why may they be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Right. Now I'd like to ask Karen Whitaker to come down and help me with communion this morning. We'll make space. We've got the table here. We should be should be okay. Hand sanitizer, you're right. Thank you. Give myself one more shot. Just to be safe. Okay. In just a moment, I'm going to invite you to come up as, as the Spirit calls you to, to share in communion. And, and as you do, simply hold out your hand, and, and Karen will use her very clean and germ-free and freshly sanitized hands to take a small piece of, of the bread and hand it to you, at which point you will step over to me and, and take that piece of bread and, and dip it gently into, into the juice for, or, uh, for communion. My friends, we in the Methodist Church believe that this table belongs to Jesus Christ. All those who wish to know Jesus and enjoy a closer relationship with him are welcome to join us at this table. Anyone who wishes to know Jesus is welcome here. The table is set, my friends. I invite you to come forth as you are able.
seated. Before we close out our worship service this morning with a word of blessing, I just want to let folks know that we'll be having another session of our Methodism 101 series that's been going on every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. We'll be meeting again next, or not Sunday, Saturday at 11.30 a.m. We'll be meeting again this coming Saturday. In, in my office, we have pastries, we have coffee, we have tea, and, and we have lots of good conversation. If, if, you've, if you haven't had a chance to join us but have been thinking about joining us or wanting us to join us, it is not a math test. Like, there are no tests, there are no exams, there is not a curriculum that builds off of itself. You will not be lost. Come, come and go as you please. We ask questions freely and, and we, have lots of, we have lots of good conversation. And so you are, you are welcome to join us. Again, that's this Saturday at at uh, 1130 in in my office uh, we did we did have a reading assignment for this last so anyone who is interested in joining us is is encouraged to maybe uh, be James the book of James chapter 2 and the book of Romans chapter 4 before before session this Saturday although although honestly if you come and you haven't read it it's okay because pastor talks for a long time and, and basically just preaches a sermon every time he opens his mouth and and so I think you'll be you'll be okay uh, so uh, any other announcements that, that I should know anything from United Methodist Women yes Linda I just want to say that somehow you got my name attached to the success of the dog blankets it was all Barb Harris so I want to give credit due to who it belongs to. I think she actually okay. deserves all credit, the round credit, to, credit to Barb. She organized, she did everything. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, you two are like in my oh, head, the, the, yeah. the dog folks <laughs> at, at the church. And so I just, I guess I just made the, the assumption that that was a team effort. But, but I know it's, yeah, my, my wife Carmen was there and, and had an absolutely fantastic time. And. Uh, and, and thankfully, uh, I have a fairly large and raucous family, and, and so she was, she was prepared coming, coming into that and, and had, had a great time. So uh, really, really a very powerful ministry with, with a lot of impact, and, and I'm very proud that, that Lake Fenton was, was a part of that. Uh, all right, so my friends, I invite you all to receive this word of blessing as we all go home. I know some of you are probably watching the Super Bowl. That's not my thing, but, but apparently it matters to lots and lots of other people. Uh, <laughs> may you see and encounter and hear Jesus in the faces of strangers and the sick and the homeless and draw nearer to him by those encounters. May the blessings of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. My friends, you are deeply loved. I invite you to go forth this morning in peace.